I'm not the one that you've been dreaming of. The dirt underneath my fingernails, some worn out shoes. I never thought that I would fall for someone like you. I couldn't sleep again last night, so I fell asleep on the couch early in the morning. And when I woke up around uh, 10 o'clock, I woke up with my ginger cat, Baguette, lying, da lying down because I was on the side like this and he was lying down next to me, almost kind of nestled in right in this part and his head being uh, next to my neck. And it felt so good when I woke up, but the danger is, is that it's the ginger cat and he's, uh, he's very unpredictable. If it was Jake, the black and white, it's not a problem. But Baguette, we are all afraid of him. We, you just don't never know whether when, when he's gonna attack you. It's like, you know, you could be walking through the kitchen and he just jumps out from underneath the table and just draws blood from my legs. It's just a standard thing. But he's a hunter and uh, he does uh, catch things and it's good to have him around, I mean, practicality-wise for the snakes. But he's also pleasure as far as the softness thing. He, he's beautiful, he's a beautiful cat, but he's unpredictable and we are a bit of afraid of him. So I woke up like that, not getting it up sleep. However, the house is empty uh, and I'm, th I'm thinking what I'm going to do today. The house is empty because uh, my stepkids, my stepsons came from Finland and uh, with their girlfriends, they came from a for a holiday. And they went uh, to another city for the weekend, but we also booked for Nicola and Alex to go with them. So all four of them are now in another city for the weekend together. For the first time, Nicola and Alex kind of went by themselves, you know, somewhere to, to have fun with, uh, with brothers in this case. So the house is empty. And it's really hot outside, so I don't think I'm going to go out. I'm going to stay in the air condition today. But what I think I'm going to do is just take it easy, hoover, because hoovering, unfortunately, is a daily thing here for me, considering that uh, the doors are pretty much always open in and out, and you know everything comes in from the garden, and uh, we have a dog and two cats. So hoovering is a daily thing. So I think I'm going to hoover and also what I want to do is our passion fruit it started giving us uh, fruit already. So what I'm going to do in order for it not to get spoiled because we can't manage to eat everything at once. What uh, I tend to do and I'm going to do now as well is um, 
I cut the fruit up and I scoop in whatever is inside and I freeze it. I put it into ice cubes and I freeze it. That way I preserve it and it's great. I mean, you can make smoothies with it, but to tell you the truth, I usually put it in gin and tonic when I have it in the, in the evenings. Uh, so like I put a few ice cubes of uh, normal ice and uh, two ice cubes of the passion fruit and then I make gin and tonic. So that's like my favorite drink in the summer. So that's the plan for today. Hey, I wish you could see yourself Just sitting there on my chair I'm looking, um, I want to buy some uh, good quality shampoo and uh, treatments for the hair. I'm already using, because um, in the past couple of years I have lost uh, quite a bit of hair and I don't know if it's hormonal or it's uh, stress related, but I do see that my hair is not what it used to be. So I'm looking to... Um, to find something that is good quality rather than a supermarket kind of uh, shampoos. I do have some serum that I'm using and that is working. My hair stopped falling out. 
I ordered that from England, but now I'm looking at uh, Moroccan oil. And I heard of that brand, but I never tried it. So I'm looking to order some Moroccan oil and to see whether they have it in Cyprus. Shampoo and uh, treatment, the actual oil itself, it's based on argan oil, I think. I just started looking at it, I'm not sure. So that's what I'm looking at it now. And I'm gonna give a call to Mario to see where he is because he went to his mom's house. It's crazy how many things you can actually get done uh, in an empty house. But I don't really know if it's uh, the empty house or the fact that I really didn't get much sleep and I don't lately. So, um, but I thought like I started recording this uh, vlog and I thought I'm going to record a bit today. You know, the, the house is quiet and then continue throughout the week. Let me see if you're straight. Um, and then continue throughout the week and compile the video and then upload it next week. But uh, it seems I was looking at the footage that I have and I actually got quite a bit of footage just recording uh, the little bits and pieces of my day. So I might, uh, I might as well finish it now and uh, so you can have the vlog uh, basically just a day in a quiet house. I might even call it like that. Um, it was so nice reading your comments from the, from the previous video, even though I, I told you that if you want to keep it to yourself when I asked you what did you bring, that I, I'm not, you don't have to post uh, the, the comment, the answer in, in the comments. I, but I really enjoyed reading them. There are so many different perspectives on how people look at the question and their answers as well. It was, it was a real pleasure. And some of you also mentioned me, which I didn't think that, uh, that you will, but it meant a lot to me to read how you see me and what I bring to you. Because y when you start off, when I started off this channel, and I believe it's like that for most of the people, I didn't, I mean, for most of the people who, who are content creators, I didn't necessarily believe that it's going to have that much of an impact of, on somebody across the world. And you're, you're recording, a, you know, in your home, in your everyday surroundings, with your everywhere, uh, with your everyday, you know, things and uh, everyday life and everyday dirt and chores and all that. And I'm just posting, basically, I'm taking you along on, on my day or on my week and show you the things that I'm making. And talking to you like I would be talking to a friend. Although it took me ages to get comfortable in front of the camera, and now I'm better. But when I started, I really didn't even imagine that I could touch somebody, let alone more people. But it seems that I did. So thank you for letting me know that. And you did throughout throughout. Uh, these couple of years that that I've been recording, but also in the in the latest video. Ever since I rec started recording more often now, I am struggling replying to all the comments, and I really wanted that was kind of my rule from the beginning to reply pretty much to every single comment. And more or less, I have been doing that until now. But I would usually have two weeks to a month to do so in between. But now for the month of June that I had this challenge of uploading every week, I'm struggling uh, and I don't know if I'm going to keep on uploading often, if, uh, if I'm going to be able to keep up. But please don't stop commenting. It, it means a lot to me to, to read them. And I was, when I was in Edinburgh, I spoke to one lady, she's probably watching, and I told her, I told her that I'm dreading the day that I'm not going to be able to reply to all the comments because I don't just necessarily reply ge generic, uh, in a generic way if I see that the comment is thoughtfully made. So I put thought in it like you would in a conversation. And, but it does take a lot of time in order to do that. It really does. It's, and I was telling her, I was um, saying that I'm dreading the day when I'm not going to be able to do that anymore. And she asked me, like, but why do you, why are you stressing? Like, why do you have to reply to every comment? I was like, well, if people took the time to actually sit down and write, 
I feel that you know it's my duty to to take the time and to reply back to that person. And then she told me an interesting perspective. She's a therapist, actually, so I'm taking her word for it. <laughs> I'm t I mean, I'm taking her opinion uh, seriously. Uh, she told me an interesting perspective. She said, no, she goes, your gift to us are the videos. And then as a payback to you, basically, what we can give to you in return are the comments. And that made me feel better because if the channel keeps on growing, there will come a moment where I won't be able. Anyway, that's, uh, that's enough about uh, another rant. I didn't plan to talk about that uh, that much. I, I did make a note of uh, what I want to say or what I want to show you. Uh, going back to the comments, I did have one question. How many stitches did I do on that uh, blue shrug in DK yarn that I showed you in the last video? I did 148, but that is completely individual. Uh, Jackie, that is her Friday shrug. I think she gives 142 or something like that. You can check it out. Um, you can check out her pattern. I'll try to remember and link it because her Saturday shrug is for Aaron or Worsted Weight. Her Friday shrug is for DK. And she gives you directions for stripes as well, which I didn't do. So, but it is really individual. I, you kind of see what your gauge is. And uh, this one was not for me. So I made it a tiny bit larger, like this much larger than I would for myself. You know, it's one by one tube with beautiful, beautiful effects, but it's one by one tube. It's easily to modify. It's very easy to modify the size. So I'll try to remember now when I'm editing uh, to put uh, Jackie's Friday shrug and also the colorway uh, of that, um, because you know that it's Stylecraft, uh, Stylecraft uh, Life DK, but the colorway of that blue one. I have here, I have, it's this one. So, oh shit, did I throw away the ball band? I'll, f I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. Um, so I had a little bit uh, left over, I had 200 grams of it. I had a little bit left over, so I decided to make a hat for my younger stepson. Because that, that really funny hat that um, my older stepson asked me a few months ago to make, the ones that they have like in Lapland that is square on the top and it looks like cat's ears here. So I made for him, but the younger one asked me to make for him as well. And he's quite eccentric, so uh, with his clothes and I, I knew that he really wouldn't mind the uh, bright color. So I used up the leftover, whatever stayed, from the shrug, I had 200 grams, I used up to make the beginning of this hat. So this, this uh, is a folded brim, so basically I had another one length of that. And then I folded it, knitted them together, then knitted straight a bit more, and then when I ran out of yarn, I just took red yarn and I did a round of mosaic knitting just one by one to make the transition and I finished it with this red I think it was my hand spun merino held with uh, mohair alpaca blend that I have this one is a bit uh, I'm not gonna try it on it's way too big for me this one is a bit more floppy than the other one that I made the other one I made uh, for for the older uh, I made out of drops lima which is thicker, thicker yarn. So I finished that. And, uh, and then when I was looking at this red, just next to me, I had two skeins of Cascade, uh, Ca Cascade Heritage, 100 grams each. And it was red color. I'll link that as well. And I'll link the color as well, the colorway as well. So that's, 400 uh, meters per 100 grams. And a few episodes ago, I showed you this uh, jumper that I made. 
uh, it's here. I showed you this jumper that I made using one strand of Drops Flora, which is similar yardage, and one strand of Cobweb Cashmere. And it took me less than 200 grams of Drops Flora. So then I thought, you know what, I really wanted the red jumper and now since I need only 200 grams or less of fingering weight yarn, so let me do the same with, uh, with this red yarn and hold it with the strand of cobweb cashmere because then I'm going to have enough yardage. So I started doing that, it was uh, completely impulsive cast, cast on and I'm not far, far in. I'm just doing it alongside other things that I'm making because that really thick fade jumper that I'm making I'm taking a bit of a break in the summer for the summer because it's really thick. So I started this one. I'm using uh, this uh, uh, row counter that uh, one of you Cricut sent me. Um, this is again my in and out raglan and I feel awkward constantly saying my in and out raglan you know, it's like it's the same same jumper every time I'm making well it pretty much is the same jumper that I'm making all the time but this is really a template if you look at that recipe it's a free recipe on my on my uh, vlog blog you, you can find that in the in the description as well it's a free recipe that allows you to kind of take any gauge, more or less any gauge, more or less any yarn, and knit a, a raglan jumper according to your own size. So you don't necessarily, you do have to do some pre-calculations, especially for the swatch, and how wide you want it for the neck, how wide you want it for the sleeves or for the body. But then you have all the, all the calculations done for you, when you should start increasing, how many stitches to put for the front, for the sleeves, for the back, when to stop increasing based your own, uh, your own dimensions. So it's not really, whenever I say in and out raglan, it's not just one pattern, it's a template really. So you can make million and one different ones, uh, different jumpers using that uh, template. Now, I tend to like the same type, type of uh, turtleneck, simple turtleneck, and I tend to knit that over and over again. But you're really not limited uh, to that. You can insert cables, you can insert color work, you can uh, make it short sleeves, uh, negative ease, uh, very, a lot of positive ease, crew neck, turtleneck, uh, wider neck, boat neck, you, you can really do whatever you want with it. I just need this one because that's the one I like. Even if you see my summer t-shirt is like that. I like those models. This is uh, from Gap, which is another story because the Gap closed here and most of my plain plain tops like that and the ones with long sleeves are from Gap and I don't know what to do. I have to find a way to order it online. And I'm also thinking to try uh, Amazon um, Basics to see whether they have something that I like and, uh, and if the quality is good. So yeah, so this, uh, I'm doing this, uh, knitting this uh, jumper, the in and out raglan, and I'm holding uh, Cascade 220, uh, not not 20, Cascade Heritage with a strand of cobweb cashmere. And making a plain turtleneck jumper, but I'm not in a hurry. This, as I said, it was completely an impulse uh, cast on. Um, I did finish that uh, mustard color hat that I, was, uh, that I was knitting, that I showed you a few episodes ago. I didn't block it yet because I'm actually, I didn't block this jumper yet either. Because I'm weaving a shawl outside, you probably saw the footage from the beginning of the video. I'm weaving a shawl and because I block my pieces uh, by putting them in the washing machine on the wool setting, and I wash them like that and then um, 
and then I uh, kind of, uh, but I don't want to put only one piece in the in the washing machine. So I'm waiting for that uh, shawl to be uh, finished, and then I'm going to put this jumper and uh, this hat as well. If the shawl takes longer than the red jumper as well, but this is finished. This is the yarn, the first yarn that I used up that I got in Barcelona. It didn't take, it didn't take uh, the whole 100 grams. I still have some left, but it's there, I didn't bring it. So, unfortunately, it's not my color. Uh, I love it, I love this color, but it doesn't, I don't think this color suits me. And which is a shame because I really, really like it. But I'll try it for you anyway. There you go. Is my, has my head been cut off completely since I started recording? I didn't even notice. I apologize for that if it was, if I was all the way up, but I'm not going to start over again. So this is the hat, and that's going to be blocked uh, with the other stuff uh, as well. This is going to be probably a Christmas gift. I wish it uh, looked good on me that I could keep it, but. I don't think the color, I think the color wash it, washes me out. So that's more or less uh, what I've been making. No, actually, no, it's not. So I've been weaving um, and if you hear some noise, I just heard the gardener walk in and uh, he started cleaning the leaves. So when I finished weaving this shawl, I decided I'm going to put it on uh, for sale. And I'm going to put some other things for sale that I've been making because I do have another shawl that, that I uh, wove and I didn't show you and another scarf that I was, uh, didn't weave for myself. I just made them, you know, inspiration struck and I made them. Actually, the scarf was meant to be for Amy Palkov, the Meaningful Stitch, when I was going to Edinburgh. But that was more of a mental kind of decision. Oh, these are because when I did, was deciding what, what I'm going to take to her, I was like, oh, she would like those colors, let me weave her a shawl. But then I got inspired to give her one of the latest crochet blankets that I made, and I was just completely right because it matched her house perfectly he had the house he had the colors that match her house just perfectly and they have just redecorated their house in that moment so i decided to put some things uh, for sale that uh, that i made in some some hand spun yarn some stitch markers, I think. Probably gonna make sets. I didn't make any of the sets yet, uh, yet, and uh, that shawl is not finished, and the other ones are not ironed. I have to look into how I'm going to transfer my website from being just a vlog into a shopping cart. But I will let you know when. Uh, it's not gonna be a lot of things. I mean, everything is uh, is handmade. So it's not gonna be a lot of things, but I will let you know uh, when, uh, when I managed to do that and when the things are available for, for sale if you want to. Two more things that I wanted to show you before I close. I've been knitting on a guard scarf. And it's probably my favorite thing to knit. To knit. Uh, that's how I started and it's my comfort. A lot of people got knit uh, shawls as comfort, especially guard shawls. I'm a bit iffy with the triangle shawls, although I am making one, but in a bit thicker yarn, so I can not wrap it around myself, but just wear it like this as grandma style. I want to see whether it's out of my hand spun, but I didn't work on it uh, for a while, so it's there on a standby. But I'm making this uh, gutter scarf, and this is what I have so far. And again, just like with my blankets, I'm playing. I have right here in front of me on the table, I have a ball 
of um, mostly my hand spun yarn. So there, are, there is some commercial yarn in this, but it's mostly my hand spun. So this is DK, DK scarf, and I'm using four millimeter needles. So what I have in this kind of bowl with, uh, on the coffee table here is just different, either DK, uh, DK yarns, DK weight yarns or just single ply uh, fingering uh, weight yarns and then I just take them if it's DK I just take one strand knit a bit or however long the ball is or just a bit I, I approach it completely intuitively and if it's fingering then I hold the two together or one fingering and one uh, mohair alpaca blend that I have so I'm really really enjoying this and I love how, how these uh, DK scarves looks, look on me. I'm going to show you, when I finish this scarf, so when I show you this one, I'm going to show you the scarf that started it all, the one that, uh, that is probably my w most worn knit throughout the years, just a plain garter scarf that I love, that got me back into knitting, you know, for making a break since I was nine years old. Although when I was nine years old, I needed the, the garter scarf for my dad as well with my mom's help, but I don't have that one. So I'm working on this and I've been spinning a lot. I don't have all of the things that I spun here, but I do want to show you that I did, uh, that I spun uh, uh, the second skein, that I plied the second skein of the purple yarn. So the last time I showed you this one, so now I'm plying more. This one is still a little bit wet, I had it outside to dry. And I still have more to ply from uh, that first bat that I spun up as, a, as just a single ply. And I'm plying this with a strand of cobweb merino in like eggplant color and the strand of cobweb cashmere in this kind of purpley fuchsia eggplant color I showed you in the last video and uh, so yeah I got another one I estimate that when I finish plying the rest what stayed from the first bat that I'm going to have just from that first bat but using these other yarns as well about 300 grams and then I have another one bat that will give me that much as well so I think that I'm going to have when I finish all of it the bats that I got in Edinburgh, I think I'm going to have about 600 uh, grams of yarn. And to finish off, even though this one is a little bit wet, every time that I make a skein, because the skeins that I make, they're pretty nice, they're tidy. See? I want to show you how I make a skein and which I, what I found, how I found the perfect way to make a skein and watch me not be able to do it now. But let's try. I take a chopstick. Okay. <laughs> so I put uh, this, uh, the skein in, uh, in one hand and I put the chopstick on the other side. I don't move this hand. I just turn the chopstick enough times that I see tightening put it here ah you see now now that I said <laughs> now I didn't do it okay it's quite easy actually so I just turn the chopstick until I find the skein tightening I put it here uh, under my chin I feed the chopstick and grab the top of the skein with my hand but because the chopstick is so thin it's very easy and then when I pull it through, I have a neat skein of yarn, which is not so neat now because I don't want to make it too tight. But, and this one is a little bit wet, but yeah, I make a really nice skein of yarn. And I always used to struggle before when I was using just my hands because then I find it difficult to feed my fingers through, you know, to the other hand. But with the chopsticks, because it's so thin, it's no problem. Let me try, uh, try it again so you can see it, but without me talking. Uh, 
And there we go. <laughs> so I hope you like that and I hope it came out well on camera because uh, I'm trying to do it looking at myself in the, in the little screen. But uh, it does work for me. I found, it, I found that by accident, but it does work for me. So here we go, we got the whole uh, video. Um, I hope you're well. Thank you for watching, kind of recapping everything. I'm sorry about the replies on the, on the comments, but it is hard and please don't stop commenting if you don't get a reply on, um, on the comment that you make. But I do read all of them and they make me happy. If, uh, if you believe me, they really make me happy when I read them. But I don't want to feel the pressure and guilt if I don't manage to answer all of them. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you are well and I would like to continue making these videos more often. Uh, that was kind of fun in June. I don't want to promise anything because I don't want the pressure because once you introduce the pressure then everything can go wrong. But uh, that's the plan as far as I'm concerned. So bye. Bye for now.